Here's an example of solving a system of linear equations in three variables using row operations. Now, we have the following system of linear equations. You'll note the coefficients are all zero and one. So we could solve this by trial and error, but the point here is to give a procedure for using Gaussian elimination. Now, we want our first example to be as simple as possible without being trivial. Our first step, we'll take our system of linear equations. So I have to tidy things up. I want to make sure my variables are all on one side, my constants are on the other. Then I'm going to line up our variables in columns. Once I've done that, we can peel off the coefficients. Each equation is going to give me a row of my augmented matrix. So we'll have 1, 1, 0, 1. So there's a 0 in front of the Z here. We have 1, 1, 1, 0. Then we have 1, 0, 1, 1. Now, once I have the augmented matrix, I can perform row operations. So we have three row operations. I can switch any two rows. I can multiply any row by a scalar. Okay, equivalently, we could factor out any number that's common to each entry in a row. And I can add a multiple of one row to another. Now, what are we trying to do with these row operations? We're going to go through our augmented matrix and try to trace out the following pattern. I'm going to start in the upper left-hand corner. We're going to want to turn this entry into a 1. Then we're going to proceed along this path as follows. Okay, so we clean up this first column. I move to the middle entry, and then we just go around for the entries that are left over. Our goal is going to be we want ones on this main diagonal. I'm going to want zeros elsewhere. And then for this last column, we're just going to carry that along. So whatever happens to that column happens, we worry about that when we get to the end. We start in the upper left-hand corner. I want to turn that entry into a 1. We note it starts out as a 1, so there's no work to be done. For our next step, I want the entry below this 1 to be a 0. Now, we can't get it to become zero by row switching. If I multiply the row by zero, okay, we're gonna get all zeros, and that's the same as just setting this equation here to zero equals zero, so that doesn't help. So I wanna add a multiple of a row to our second row to get zero. Now, it's gonna come from the first row, and the heuristic is, when I'm adding multiples of rows to other rows, we're always gonna use rows with the one that we're interested in being cleaned up already. So for instance, if I want to clean up this one, I have a choice of this one here or this one here. I go with this one because we've already cleaned it up or we've at least noted that it's clean. Now, how do I get this to become zero? Well, I forget about our other columns. What do I have to do to this one to add it to this one to get zero? I multiply by a minus one, we add, the entry becomes zero. Then we extend to the rows. So I'm gonna have minus row one plus row two is gonna give us our new row two with a zero in this entry. Now, you're gonna want a lot of paper, so it'll be easier to troubleshoot. So your work's gonna look like this. I'm gonna have row two, I'm gonna have minus row one. We're gonna add down the columns, and then we get our new row two. So I take the old row two, replace it with new row two. Now when I have space, I'll write our equations off to the side to see what our row operations are actually doing. So we note in this case, we're getting that z is equal to minus one already. Now, next step, we have a one and a zero. Okay, so our next step is gonna to be to turn this one here into a zero. So again, we're just gonna take a multiple of row one, add it to row three. Same trick as for row two. I'm gonna take minus one times row one, add it to row three, and we get our new row three. Okay, so as before, we ignore these columns. We're gonna want that we're using the one that we've already cleaned up, so it's gonna to have to come from row one. Now, we do our work off to the side. I have row three. I have minus row one, 
we add, then we have our new row three. So we replace it in the augmented matrix. Again, we can write our equations off to the side. So we just cleaned up this last equation to get minus y plus z equals zero. Now, what can we do here? Well, one, zero, zero, I want a one here. I can get that by just doing a row switch. So if I switch row two and row three, what are we gonna have? Well, we're just taking this row and this row, switching to get here. Now I don't have a one there, I have a minus one. So my next step is just gonna be to multiply row two by a minus one. And that gets us to this augmented matrix. So we have ones down the diagonal. If you wanted, at this step, we could just take z equal to minus one. We have y minus z equals zero, so I could solve for y. Then I have x plus y equals one. I could solve for x in terms of the y we just found. So once you have this upper triangular matrix here, you can start back substituting. Now, we have one, zero, zero, one, zero, one. We want this minus one to be a zero. So, same idea as before. We ignore the first two columns and the last column. How do I turn this minus one into zero using this one? Well, I'm just gonna add this one to our minus one to get zero. So I take row three, add it to row two, we get our new row two. So we do our work, we get our new row two, and then we get this new augmented matrix. Now, we're going around here, so the only thing that's gonna be left is this one in our second column, and then we'll be done. So the way we clean that up, okay, we ignore these columns, ignore this column. I'm gonna take minus row two, add it to row one, so we do our work, then we get our final augmented matrix. So I have the identity matrix in this first part, which means I could just read off our answer. So I'm gonna have x equals two, y equals minus one, z equals minus one for our solution. Now we're not done yet, okay? So if we have time, we always check our solution. So we're gonna take these numbers for x, y, and z, put them into our original equations. Now, if this is a solution, then when we put our numbers in, our equalities are gonna hold. So if we check that, we see that in fact, the check works out. 